Hi, happy Monday. Thank you for being here. Happy International Waffle Day. I thought that we would go ahead and start with Bitcoin today since it is pumping, like it pumped so much this morning. It's pretty crazy. Bitcoin is up 5.1% at the moment. Switch here to the five minute chart. You can see a lot of this move is this morning. It does look like it's leveling off here for about the past 90 minutes. I'm not sure if it's just stalling while the market's closing and people are busy or if it's going to continue on up. If it does want to continue moving up, I'm watching really the 72,000 area. If it does want to fall, it is above just on today's hollow green candle, which is pretty beautiful, above that 69,000 support level at this point. It's good Ethereum. Oops. My bad, had my setting on wrong. Ethereum. Ethereum's up on 5.1% as well. Same kind of a move. We did bounce off of this. 50 on the daily chart here. This was last Wednesday, sitting pretty flat, and now we're getting a nice move up. We are right at a resistance level on Ethereum, right at about 36.50. If we can break above that, honestly, the next resistance above looks like it's all the way up here at about 3,900, right under 4,000. Wouldn't surprise me too much if it continues up and does retest that 4K number. SPY, we are on the daily chart on SPY here. There, it wasn't loading correctly. My apologies. We are there it goes. Perfect. We do have kind of a weird little teeny tiny candle here, walking ourselves right back down to the top of what was Wednesday's giant hollow green candle where we did break up to that 520 area. Low of the day today, 519.61. High of the day, 520.95. It has been flat, flat, boring, teeny tiny, weird looking candle to the point where my trading view doesn't even want to load it properly. So that's the kind of day we are having. QQQ. It's very, very similar looking chart. However, it is underneath still that 445 resistance area. It still blows my mind that we're all the way up at 445 on QQQ. Love to see it. Oh, hey, Babs. Happy International Waffle Day. Hope you had an awesome weekend. DXY over 104. Oh, still under that 104.5 resistance. We did get that golden cross on the daily. I missed that earlier, actually. Hey, look at that. There it is. It crossed. Oh, that is that could be just the worst news ever. So if we do want to break over 104.5, SPY, oh, SPY might come back down. I'm still watching for a 50 back test. That's all the way down at about 504. I hate to even say that out loud. If it does want to come down and test that 50, that's a really nice support level. I'm going to change the color of it, actually. We are closed on Friday, which um, so the close of the monthly candle this week is going to be on Thursday. So it's going to be kind of a weird week, I think. I don't love that we are um, that close to resistance. Give me just a quick second. My husband needs some. Sorry, I thought it was important. He just wanted food. Um, SMH 230. We do have still have a nice gap here on SMH. My goodness. 221.62. I do want to go back to SPY a little bit. Distracted with that, my bad. Middle of this consolidation zone between 510 and 515 would be the first real support area. I still would like to see it come down a little bit further, that 504. But keep in mind, I really want to buy, so I want to be bearish. I really do. Yes, one. No real direction here. Nice lower wick. Not a whole ton of movement today on, on anything. It's kind of odd. Oil. Sitting overall pretty flat. Nice green candle. It is up almost 2%. We are still in this little channel, this upward channel that it's been in. I know that they're all the same color on my chart. I apologize. So it's hard to see, but I'm going to go ahead and pull. We did get a death cross on oil back in December. We're pretty close to a golden cross on it. We got one on DXY. So I guess it wouldn't be so surprising if we did end up getting one on oil. Oil wants to get over that 8360 area. That could also be not so great for SPY. Oh, I just want to back test, but things are looking actually really kind of sketchy. Gold sitting super flat since we had this monster, monster move off of the 50 back in the middle of March. Giant wick last Thursday. Not a ton of movement on it, but it doesn't look bad at all. As long as it can stay above that support. I'm going to go ahead and turn the MAs off on silver. I hate hate MAs on range-bound stocks. Crazy volume really for almost the past full year on silver. Got very close to that 26. It bounces between 22 and 26. Looks like it rejected it. If it wants to fall, honestly, that 22 is where, probably where it's going to want to go. GME was up wildly today. I'm not sure if they had news. I wasn't really paying attention. They have been sitting right in between 13.5 and 15. Made almost that entire move today. <laughs> Low of the day, 13.3. High, 14.96 on GME. Crazy. Waffles breakfast of champions. We've got to, got to keep track. That way we know what whether we should be eating oysters or waffles or whatever we're doing. Okay. Yeah. CCL. Oh, boy. How are the cruise lines doing? Cruise lines sitting, channeling up, still above the 50 on CCL. As long as it can get above 18, I think it looks fine. Otherwise, nah. 
it's not doing so great. I haven't seen too much news on the cruise lines. Like they used to be so hot, like last summer when they were making this giant move. There it was last spring and summer where they just went straight up into the sky. And I guess it's consolidating. I haven't heard too much on them really since then. Roblox, slightly red on the Roblox. Looks okay. Close to filling that gap at 3530. I'm going to put an alert on that. I want to see what's going on with some of the memes just because GME is so crazy up. I put Roblox in the meme category and I probably shouldn't do that, but they trade like a meme. AMC still sitting right at about four. Earnings were green. Still riding right below that daily 50. Things are just sketchy looking today. Sketchy, sketchy. I hate to pull up space, but I want to see what it's doing. Oh, good. It's hitting a new low. Good for you, Richard Branson. I'm happy for you. Let's see. Who else is moving? I'm trying to get a narrative going. Uh, I want to be bearish, but things look bearish. So I want to make sure I'm not just self-fulfilling with a bearish plan. GWH looks like trash on fire. There was news that um, Trump's DWAC, DWAC, they're getting rid of and replacing it with Truth Social. And it's going to start trading under DJT. Oh, oh boy. Well, that'll be a fun one, maybe the day trade. I think it's going to start trading this week, next week, starting tomorrow. Woof. All right. We'll probably day trade that one for fun. Paro is another one that was moving. I think Christian day traded this one. Uh, it was up. Now, it, now it's right back down. Weird. Sketchy. See, these charts are so sketchy looking today. Wolf up 5%. Right at resistance, Wolf looks pretty good for a $2.50 stock. However, it is right up here at resistance. We broke out of that downtrend about a year ago. It's just been consolidating really between $1 and $2.50. Super great volume, green earnings. Hey, welcome to the watch list, Wolf. Pretty nice move on that one. There were some other stocks that were just wildly moving this morning, like bouncing up, bouncing down. Let's check out Coin. We looked at the cryptos and I didn't look at the miners. What am I doing? Oh man, coin broke above its resistance. So it's above 275, high of the day 283.48. That looks good. Anything, if it could stay above 275, I don't see why it wouldn't continue on up. This thing is just, I mean, this chart is so pretty looking now. It used to be one of the scariest looking ones, but it looks so beautiful. Nice W off of resistance, popped up. Now it just looks like it, it was back testing what became support at 220, right above that 275 area. Mara. Oops, that's Marriott. That's not Mara. Mara doesn't look that good. Marriott looks great. I'll go back to that chart though. Uh, Mara, it, not as beautiful looking as coin, but it is, it isn't, it technically above its 50, above resistance. I'm sorry, above support, above 20. That seems fine. That's hot. I love trading the mining stocks, but I don't have any right now, which is hurting my soul a little bit. Um, hut close to $9.78, which is the resistance, not as strong looking as Mara. Really beautiful volume since they're split though. Kava. Kava had made this crazy move last week and now it's just sitting like silly flat underneath, underneath uh, 70. It didn't even hit 70. High ever is 69.20 on Kava. As long as it can hold that, looks good. Otherwise, where would a 50 back test be? Probably, we'll call it 60 bucks. I'm just going to go through and do some basic charting since the spy doesn't want to seem to move for us. It's going to be kind of a boring spy day. Very sad. DK and G. Still struggling with 50. Zooming out on it, though. It looks beautiful. I should get a better DraftKings. It looks a little fuzzy to me. Uh, DK and G, close to 50. Anything about 45 on it seems fine. My stocks are flat. Market's flat. Who's moving? Just AMC? Really? Scary. FSR. Oh, my God. FSR had some news. This thing, oh, it's one of the most hilarious charts I've ever seen. So it was a terrible, god-awful, ridiculous-looking SPAC. Bounced around without really moving all that much. It really was just hanging out between 8 and 20 bucks. Decent swings, but just nonsense. And then just a slow burn and then just a fall straight to hell. It's, I have to keep zooming out on this just to get how low it has dropped. Ah, funny. Lucid. Lucid was up, actually. So Lucid was up right above its daily 50 and we did the thing we tested the downtrend and it looks like it's rejecting it good job lucid i was really excited when i saw the news that it was up i was thinking it was all the way up back at like four dollars finally breaking above this downtrend for us nope right back in it looks like space getting just absolute wrecked 
Rivian, though, seems to have found a base right above $10. If, if it wants to hold it, I might pick this one up. I really like the volume. I know that the earnings were green. They are definitely in a downtrend. It is not a good looking chart by any stretch of the imagination, but they did find a base. What I would be looking for is a test of that daily 50. So if I could grab it really eh, 10 or 11 bucks, testing that 50, that would be 25-ish percent. That would be a test of what's the top of these wicks here, 13.5. That's not bad at all. I'm going to set an alert on that one too. I might buy that one this week. I really need to buy some stocks. I'm only about 50% invested and I've been very much going slow about loading my port. I was all cash after the new year, which was hurting me a little bit and I'm a little bit behind. So I need to get some more money in the game one way or the other. It's so frustrating when you're in cash and like not losing it. Oh, hey, hey Christian, happy International Waffle Day. I'm having a bad day in the market. It's been a while since it's bad. Oh, I'm sorry. It's gonna be kind of a wild week. So it's a four day week, we're closed on Friday. Uh, my ANF position was three times my normal size, and all three of my day trades today failed. Ah. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I'm not lying right now. I had an order for Reddit today when it was up like 1%, and it's up. Is it really? I didn't even see that. Man, I should put that in the title. Thank you. Holy Reddit. I'm sorry you missed that, though. Ah, That is the most frustrating thing in the universe. I'm going to put the one-hour chart on. I hate the one-hour, but at least we could see something moving on this guy since it is so new. Kind of a W. You did call that. Um, you called that. IHS on the five minute right after they IPO'd. Man, they just bounced. What happened? There had to be news or something. You know, all the, the Wall Street bets people are just playing with that. They're just making it move like crazy. I'm sorry, though. It's tough to like set all those trades up and not, not have them. Frustrating. Take it easy this week, though. Close of, the, close of the quarter, close of the monthly candle. We have some data this week. Um... Jobs numbers on Thursday, durable goods orders tomorrow. Waller speaking on Wednesday, no real data coming out. We do have PCE trade and um, some retail numbers all coming out on Friday while the market is closed. Next Monday, we have PMI. Tuesday, not a ton on Tuesday. U.S. auto sales, if you are into the auto stocks, I should probably pay attention to that since I'm looking to buy Rivian. But hey, I like the chart. I don't really care what the numbers say. I probably shouldn't say that, though. PMI on Wednesday, jobs numbers on Thursday, and wages next Friday. Can't believe it's gonna be April. Anybody have any Easter plans? Yeah, I don't blame you, man. That that blows. Ugh, that is so hard. What? Like it just took off like on a five-minute candle. Don't beat yourself up too much, man. Please. That happens. Could very easily have dropped. It's such a weird name. I don't even know why it's pumping. I'm gonna Google it. Why is Reddit moving? Reddit stock. I think it's just options. Just looks like everybody's playing with it. Let's see what other news we have coming out here. Oh, well, of course, earnings this week. We have Westport today, whatever this is, B-A-K-K-T, Recor, Recor, McCormick. Hey, spices tomorrow. Or open tomorrow after close, we have GameStop. Really weird that GameStop is pumping so much today when their earnings are tomorrow afternoon. Hmm. I might have to gamble on that one a little bit. Man, I hate to, hate to say that. GME, I want to see what's going on. Whoops. I want to see what's going on. I completely missed it there. Earnings were tomorrow after the close. They are still pumping. That is so odd. GME, not GEM. So they are at a new high of the day, over 15 bucks. Man, all the way, almost all the way back to the top of this little mini consolidation area. We'll call that 15.5. Giant hollow green candle today. Massive movement. Look at it. It's just going, going and going. Spy, we're going to move at all into the close? No. Spy is sitting... Completely flat, boring, QQQ, flat, boring. GME is moving, Reddit is moving. Paramount is sitting still pretty flat. A little bit of chop this morning. Save. Not a ton of movement going on on save. We did seem to find us at least a short-term bottom here around four bucks. Hmm. I don't blame you on the Reddit thing. Oh, see, I'm not even showing you my chart. My bad. My apologies, save. We did seem to find a short-term bottom here right around $4. Really nice volume, even after this horrific drop and sell. I know that JetBlue was looking at acquiring them. They were blocked. Then they decided to, to back out of the deal. They know they had a hearing set for June. JetBlue was like, nope, not even worth our time anymore. Moved right on. Is Bitcoin pumping? Bitcoin is pumping. Ooh. Trying to, again, back above 70. Looked like we were consolidating a little bit. Nope, up. Send it. Hey. 
this could be really, really fun into uh, into the end of the month. I was looking to see if um, maybe we would get a sell-off today, maybe some window dressing starting this week, as it is a four-day week. Doesn't seem like we're going to have any of that. Hmm. Just looking for more news. SEC to seek $2 billion in, in penalties from Ripple Labs. Yikes. Disney hit a 52-week high. Let's check out Disney. It did. Yikes. All the way above all the way above this uh, resistance here from this crazy candle that we had back in February of 2023. Really nice move. So we had earnings, which were great, gapped up, sat pretty flat for about a month, and it's just slowly walked its way up to this resistance, and today just powered right through it. Disney looks excellent, especially if it can stay above that 118 area. That's tough if I read it, though. Oh, Square. Square's another one looks good. So Square consolidating near its resistance area, right about 85. S was watching S after they dropped on their earnings. They do seem to be holding this support here from the previous earnings gap up. The low was right around 21. I would like to see us come back and test this 200, really fill that gap down at $20.40. It looked like it wanted to do it about two weeks ago. Now, sitting flat, I mean, it looks okay. Honestly, I want it to, I want it to be red. I want to get into that one. Duolingo slightly red today, all in all pretty flat. Nice little W forming underneath that 230 resistance above. Jeez, everything's so sketchy. Sketchy market today. Sketchy waffle day. Get your maple syrup sugar high on, market makers, please, and make some big buys and make it move for us. QQQ. Uh, man, almost the last 10 minutes and we're sitting so flat. All right, let's find things that are moving, not flat things. Flat things are boring. Disney was up. We covered Disney. I'm just scanning on the side. You is up 4%? Really? You. So you is clear secure. It's an, it is an tangentially related to airline name. It um, If you use their service, I love it. You can skip the lines. It's like um, TSA PreCheck, but it's a, it's a subscription service. It's a little bit better than TSA PreCheck, I think, though, because they just they walk you right to the front of the line. You don't have to wait in an additional TSA line. So I'm a huge fan. I do love that it's subscription based. That's good for the stock. Earnings were green. They really have been channeling down since their IPO, but it looks like they want to maybe try to reverse that. If they can stay above that 200, I might get back into that one. I've traded that one. I can't even tell you how many times. CGC is down 18%. What? Monster, like it was like a 40% move on Friday. Slightly red today, still above that daily 200. Honestly, it's still in this downtrend. Let me go ahead. I bet it just tested and rejected it. Uh, it did. Oh, come on, CGC. Give us some hope in pot stock land. It really needs to get above and stay above 650. How is MSOS? This is the pot stock ETF. Snoop Dogg's pretty happy with it. They're above their daily 50, above the resistance as well at about $9. It is red today. It just looks like it's going to back test that 50, which is also support. It did break above its downtrend finally, and we do have an election year, of course, so it's probably going to be in the news and react to that. I don't trade too much of the pot stocks, but that's what I've been told by pot stock trading geniuses. And it makes sense, really. Lots of pot news. I can see it moving some names. Unity Software. Unity is one that really loves its range. So it sits right between 24 and 50. I've been waiting to catch this guy's close to 23, $24 so I can get it. It hasn't quite gotten down there. It was close last week. The goal with this one, of course, is the top of that range, which would be a beautiful 80 plus percent move on commons. Please let me into that one. I'm excited for it. LEV up 5%. If you like really, really scary looking SPAC slash now penny stocks, but their chart doesn't look terrible. It does look like they found a bottom. Trying to find things that are moving today. Moving to the, so 10 minutes into the close, spy. We're gonna do anything. I just want to check the see how the five minute candle is opening. My guess is no. Nah, it's just sitting pretty flat. Just wanted to get a visual on it. Let's go ahead and see who has some earnings today. Westport Fuel Systems, WPRT. Earnings today after the close whipped above their daily 200. Yikes, this thing looks nasty. Woo. So it did, uh, did it break above its downtrend? It's, it's thinking about breaking above its downtrend. It wants to. I think it wants to. Uh, it kind of did. Oh boy, let's be honest. Where's the downtrend? It was here. All right. It's, it did break out of its downtrend. I have to give it credit. It is a $6.97 stock. That's not terrible. If it could stay above that daily 200, it looks okay. I don't love 
that were up 10% into earnings. That is a really nice green volume bar as well. Pretty decent volume the past month. Last few earnings were red. Oh boy, that one doesn't look bad. The scariest thing I can say about it is that it is up into their earnings. BKKT, I don't know what they do. Bakht Holdings, what are we? We are a commercial services company. Miscellaneous commercial services. That's very descriptive. Thank you. It is a SPAC. It looks like a SPAC. Woo. It is worth 58 cents. It's flat into its earnings. Mm. Let's see. Earnings, 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 earnings. All right. It, it tends to stay pretty flat on its earnings. Very odd. So it makes weird movements uh, mid earnings cycle. I'm not even sure what they do. It just looks scary. I'm going to just leave that one alone. R E K R. We are, of course, in our last four days of the quarter, so everybody's reported, really, but there are a couple of these names that are still coming out. This chart, $2 name, Death Cross on the daily, increasing volume. It's on a support. It doesn't look bad. Oh, I hate to say that. The worst thing on this thing that I can see is that Death Cross, but really it's just been walking itself down. The increasing volume looks nice. I am going to use VRVP on this, which I don't tend to do. Um, it's up. That would align pretty much pretty directly with the test of those MAs. Very interesting. Hang on. Let me turn that guy off. Whoops. I pushed the wrong button. I want to get my date and price range here. So if we did, if it did want to pop up, the next resistance above is right in the middle of that VRVP where that volume is. Also a retest of those MAs. That's 32% up. Ooh, six minutes. I might buy this one. Said I wasn't going to buy anything today. And here I am. Oh my goodness. I'm going to think about it. R E K R. TMC, the metals company. The metals company. Ooh, ooh. Yikes. SPAC. Kind of a cup and handle. Dollar and 50 cent name. It broke above resistance. Now it's retesting that dollar and 50 cent area. It doesn't look terrible, but it is a scary looking SPAC chart. Not sure what the nicest way to say that is. Knowing that this is a scary looking risky POS, it looks fine. That's the best I can do. SMTI. Sonara MedTech. Today after the close, flat, boring right at 36. We're going to skip it. GHG. Green Tree Hospitality Group. Woo. So this one, another one that broke above its downtrend. $3 name, risky. Trashy SPAC looking chart. Okay, we can work with that though. It's above the 50, sitting super, super flat since really the entire year. It's been right at $3. If it wants to pop up, I'd be watching 350. That might not be a terrible swing. If it drops though, 295. So 25 cents up, 25 cents down. Eh. We're looking for a gamble. It looks like it wants to move, but hey, be aware. Dada, Dada, D A D A. Nexus Limited. Yikes, another $2 name. Yeah, see all the, good, all the quote, good companies already reported. Now we're left with these trashy SPAC penny names. What a Monday. Come on, market. GME's up. Trashy SPAC names are reporting. SPY is sitting flat. All right, where's the money at? Tesla, slightly green. Sitting also very flat. It's not in Tesla today. Tesla's boring. Microsoft, slightly red, back testing for 20. Well, holding it just fine. Honestly, it looks like spy channeling up. It looks excellent. Super low volume today. Boring. Next, Meta. All right, market makers, where are you at today? You can't all possibly be waiting for that Donald Trump stock, can you? Hmm. Meta sitting flat right at 500. Nope, not there. NVIDIA. What are you guys trading today, whales? Come on. NVIDIA sitting under 1,000. It is green today. Hey, up almost 1%. That one almost looks fun. So if it wants to reject 1,000, I'd be watching the bottom of this previous consolidation zone at 850. It's blowing my mind that NVIDIA is at $1,000. Absolutely can't believe it. In a good way, of course, but can't believe it. AMD has been walking itself down since we had this wild wick back on March 8th. Now we are sitting just below, and it looks like struggling with now. We could say struggling with now that we have two candles, I guess. That daily 50, it is right above support at 180. That might not be a bad entry, to be honest. I don't love that it's below the 50, but it is on support. So if it wants to try again to test this resistance above, that would be about a 12% trade. AMD doesn't look bad, as long as it can stay above 170. 
be watching that 50 though. Let's see, who else have we not looked at today? AMD, NVIDIA, ooh, Hood, we didn't look at Hood yet. Hood is up 4%, there's somebody moving, excellent. All right, so Hood is right back up to this resistance here, just under 20 bucks, high of the day, 1910. As long as it can stay above 17.2, I think it looks fine. Really nice to see it break out of that range between 770 and 13.20. Finally, on their last earnings, it's just been slowly grinding its way up here to the top of this previous consolidation area from December of 2021. If it can get above here, the next resistance looks like it's all the way up at about 21, just under 22, really. That wouldn't be a bad move. Hood looks excellent. It's nice to see it moving. Who else is moving? GWH, cheap name, MU, 6%. Hey, there's a mover. Holy MU, I can't believe it. So this guy had earnings. It gapped way up, hit all-time highs on their earnings, held it. Today is up another 7%. High of the day, 121.41 on MU. There's some fun in the market. Okay, let's go ahead and get some lines on this guy. I didn't mean to push that button. I wanted my lines. Thank you. Let's see where we are here. Retest of the 50, if it wants to drop, would also roughly fill that gap from the gap up just at about 95. We're all the way up at 120, though, and it does not look like it wants to stop. Those are some wild, giant volume bars. Congrats, MU Bulls. Man, that's what we should have been buying, Christian. Dang it. Should have bought MU. Um... I am probably the worst trader of MU ever. Every time I try to swing it, I feel like I grab it at the wrong time. I think it's cursed. I'm cursed when I touch it anyway. Um, probably why it's up. I'm not in it. Uh, let's move this guy out of the way. Pinterest still sitting just under 35. Holding it, though. If it wants to hold 35, it seems fine. Just getting to see if anything is moving. What a waffle day. Everybody's out with their waffles. I don't have to make waffles. I've made waffles in a while. I have a waffle maker. I read that you can make zucchini fritters in it, which I thought was kind of brilliant. So I should try that. Maybe I'll do that today. Get some, some excitement going on on this Monday. Spy, really? All the way back near the low of the day. So we, we opened, popped up like a dollar, sat there all day. And now in the last two five minute bars are all the way back down to the low of the day. We're not even gonna set, set a new low. Watch it just sit like right here. Come on, spy. Stop playing with my heart. QQQ, same kind of a thing. Walked up a little bit further. It was a little bit more exciting this morning. Sat flat all day. Man. DXY, same kind of a thing. Dropped this morning, sat flat all day. Golden cross finally on DXY. I'll go ahead and get rid of the death cross. We'll clean this chart up a little bit. Get rid of all this Valentine's Day stuff as we are waiting for the market to close here. 15.92 on SPY, 21 seconds. I'm just going to leave the five minute up and see if it does want to set a new low. Nope. Green candle. What in the Waffle Monday has gone on in the market today? Jeez. Not even any exciting earnings. So sad. Tomorrow's going to be way more fun, though. We do have that new ticker, that DJT ticker coming out. We have some data, we have some speakers, hopefully shake up the market a little bit. Everybody I think is just taking a long weekend after watching the Montreal Canadiens absolutely womp on the Seattle Kraken last night, which was a very sad day. So I think everybody's just a little hungover. Uh, good, then they should be ready to rock and spend some money in the market tomorrow. Love it, thank you guys for being here as always. Happy, wonderful Waffle Monday, and I hope that you celebrate accordingly and have Excellent, fluffy, delicious waffles. See you guys tomorrow.